Observations by Idris Shah Collected by Lindsay Tarabda and Zoltan E. Naobandev Original Material Copyright 1982 by L. Tarabda and Z. E. Naobandev The words herein are copyright 1982 by Idris Shah This recording was produced and published in 1998 by arrangement with El Tarabda and Z.E. Naobandev and the estate of Idris Shah. This book is read by David Wade. Someone says that I haven't taught him anything that he can remember. He can't understand yet that that's precisely what I am aiming at. Lord Wavell, who was once Viceroy and Governor-General of India during the British period, told me that one day an Indian nationalist said to him, You British are bandits, and yet you accuse us Bengalis of being terrorists. Your official documents even classify some Indians as belonging to criminal tribes. Wavell said, his solitary eye twinkling, I simply told the fellow, be that as it may, the difference is that we are reformed bandits. People think that Sufis have too much power because they give orders to people. But they are judging by the false Sufi. Many centuries ago, the great Maruf Kahi of Khorasan put it this way, a Sufi has a right to be served, but he has no right to demand. Religion is often confused with religiosity, just as it is confused with emotionality and obsession. Spirituality is the essence of religion, and there is, again, an essence of spirituality. Sufism is the essence of essences. At last it has happened. A research man writes to say that he is preparing a thesis on the insusceptibility of Sufi materials to scholarly analysis. People confuse behaviour with significance. Quite a lot of approaches to the Sufis are useless. But this is not to say that they may not be elegant and even heroically optimistic. Like trying to touch your right elbow with your right hand. Fame at last. Walking along the Strand in London this dismal, rainy afternoon, I saw a woman with a small boy coming my way on the other side of the street. She said something to him and then ran across the road. You're Idris Shah, aren't you? she asked. Yes, I am. Could you please give my little boy some Afghan stamps? As quite often happens, a number of people came here today to discuss what they term the difficulties of study. We sat through almost interminable accounts of individual problems, personality conflicts, clinical conditions, uncertainties and challenges. I wrote them all down, and was quite easily able to note beside each item a story or teaching which explained the behaviour which was being described. But when I said, I cannot help any of you, because my job is to help people who have taken note of what is already to be noted, which means here people who do not now suffer from these forms of self-amusement, they looked at me with amazement. This is because they read books for what they think they want, not for instruction. All they needed was self-observation and the correcting of wild assumptions. And that is to be found almost everywhere. The story is told of a man who bought a first-class ticket for a bus journey. 
Not long after the trip started, he approached the driver and said, There are three classes of passenger on this bus, but I cannot see the difference between them. I am a first-class passenger and have paid the highest fare. What do I get? Just you wait and see, was the only reply he could get. The bus ground to a halt at the foot of a mountain, and the driver announced, Third class passengers get out and push. Second class walk. The first class ticket holders may keep their seats. It is bad business practice to manufacture enemies. The world is overstocked with them already. My first teacher was asked, How can I be less hostile to others? He said, None can be at all hostile to others unless he or she loves himself or herself too much. Robert Graves, on seeing a hostile review of one of my books, wrote this to me. In case it troubles you, note two things. One, I have had about 2,000 worse reviews than you. Two, when you get a bad review, always correct the reviewer's English. For some reason, it is always much worse than that of a real writer. Even a hen has a short and flat ruff to sit on, so that it doesn't get in the way. But your mind can be so full of long and short, hard and soft thoughts that they stick out all over the place, interfering with thinking itself. Wisdom is when you understand what previously, at best, you only knew. People try to simplify things beyond the advantage to be gained from so doing. For example, there are times when the unreasonable thing to be is reasonable. Mullah Nasruddin's neighbour had a dog which barked all night. Nasruddin bought the dog. I suppose you're going to get rid of it, Mullah, asked a crony. Not likely. Why should I pay good money and not get my own back? I'm keeping the dog in my own house. Let the people next door find out what it's like to have a neighbour with a barking dog. It is said that there are more people trying to study Sufis than there are Sufis to study. Is this due to a shortage of Sufis? No, but it does mean that there is a shortage of Sufis available for study. I asked a television interviewee, much in demand for information on contemporary affairs, to repeat this poem. I am now going to my country community, for there I will find knowledge. He immediately said, At this moment in time I withdraw to consult my membership in the grassroots. That's what it's all about. One of the great Sufi masters, whom I had asked about the Sufi role in this world, told me, If things go wrong the Sufi is often the person to be blamed. And if the Sufi produces miracles, success, causes an extraordinary and beneficial happening, this is attributed by ordinary mankind to mere luck. Or its side issues are pounced on, and he is again blamed for them. Writers and others know that they are well known when they are referred to in print and speech without qualification. Bloggs says, 
is always far more impressive than Professor Ralph XYZ Bloggs, PhD, Professor of Cats and Mice at so-and-so university, says. But beware of thinking that this usage is universal. When a man came to see about the drains here the other day, he said, Name of Shah? Yes. I'm Mr. Bloggs. Questions are more important than answers when they make people think. Answers are more important than questions when such answers have no questions. Sufis restrict their information and actions because to do otherwise would often be both a solecism and absurd, like giving a comb to a bald man. When something is of interest only to fools, this does not mean that it is intended only for fools. Not very long ago I was travelling with a renowned sage, learned in the law of the Far East. When we arrived at Bombay Airport, journalists swarmed on board our aircraft and asked him if he could perform miracles. Our next stop was Cairo, where the information sought was whether he had committed the Koran to memory. Arriving at Paris, the interviewers insisted on being told whether the gentleman had a doctorate in philosophy. He booked his return flight within the hour after that, and now we shall never see him again. Have you noticed that when you are wrong, it may only need a child in a crowd to point it out, but that if you are right, it can involve dozens of scholars and decades of work to investigate and vindicate you. Teaching is like setting bones. In both cases, it is not just that something be done, but that it be done correctly and with knowledge. Real teachers spend just as much effort in preventing wrong learning as they do in promoting right learning. The stationary wheel does not squeak, does not, that is, show its need of lubrication. A very ugly monkey was throwing stones at the door of a witch with a nasty reputation. His fellows crowded around to see what would happen. "'Aren't you afraid that she will become infuriated and turn you into a toad?' one asked. He said, "'That is exactly what I am counting on.'" People who disagree with the Sufis are often found to be thinking along similar lines to those who would disagree with the multiplication tables, because they don't subtract. The Sufis are not there to be agreed with or dissented from. Blake would have understood them. He said, Always be ready to speak your mind, and a base man will avoid you. The best way to describe people who take pieces of genuine spiritual traditions and use them for emotional or social purposes is to liken this behaviour to that of the man on a sinking ship, who found a lifeboat and started to break it up, to make the pieces into a raft. The organisers of a conference on world problems were not annoyed because I could not attend. They were, however, infuriated by the fact that I was too busy dealing with the problems of world conferences. Words, they say, are the food of minds. But like other foods, they can do little by themselves. You think 
that what the wise have taught about extra dimensions for mankind is absurd. And yet, you can conceive that a butterfly, which lives only for a day, may regard the concept of a week as a ridiculous fantasy. Sufism is the doing in this lifetime what any fool will be doing in ten thousand years' time. Three Understandings There is understanding. Then, understanding of understanding. And finally, the understanding of what one did not understand. The second most powerful and effective contribution of the modern world is the healing art brought near to perfection. The first, of course, is the art of destruction. There is a limit to negligence. You can't forget to die, for instance. I do not say that the scholars do not know anything about Sufism. You can see from their books that they know all about it, except what it means. Ignorance is servitude and knowledge gives hope, but only understanding is freedom. Someone asks why we oppose self-appointed specialists in Sufi matters. Uh, we do not, of course, oppose the method of appointment, only the quality of the appointee. You say that laughter means superficiality, though you note that a lack of a sense of humour is undesirable. I believe that people who appreciate humour are twice as valuable as those who do not. But better still are those who can laugh at jokes and still profit from their serious content. Self-deception is always very near under two sets of circumstances. One, when you feel that you are right. Two, when you feel that you are wrong. It is said that a large enough assemblage of gnats could smother an elephant. Who denies it? But they would, after all that effort, remain gnats. People are always asking why Sufis are so difficult to find. Perhaps this is the reason. It is said that one of the great sheikhs of Khorasan in olden times decided to walk to Baghdad by easy stages, spending several days at a time in various places en route. When he started, there were very few people on the road, but as the days passed, more and more people were to be found making their way onto and along the highway. One day the sheikh, seeing yet another party flooding onto the road, blocking his path, asked them, Brothers, why is the whole world rushing to march in this manner, consuming the world's food and fodder? Haven't you heard? said the leader of the group. The great sheikh of Khorasan is walking to Baghdad, and we thought that there must be some unusual merit in it. So we abandoned our village and are doing the same, following the example of this great man. An anonymous reviewer claimed in a major British literary journal in 1969 that I ostentatiously despised accepted academic behaviour, and published materials showed that this was becoming widely believed during the following two or three years. Although the message did not get through to the imitators that the original publication was, by 1971, lauding me 
for opposing pedantry and formalism. Then, as the pendulum swung back, my own work was being treated as scholarly, impressive, worthy, and so on, and I was showered with invitations to accept professorships. Perhaps this should have restored my faith in academe. But perhaps, again, if the earlier complaints were right that I was a menace to the profession of learning because of my negligence of their standards, I could not do as well as, for instance, Surrey University. It granted a BSc degree to a ginger tom cat named Orlando, which, according to the Daily Telegraph, was enrolled with professorial approval in the linguistics department. It is proposed that he should do an MPhil, and that he is considered no ordinary student is evidenced by his candidature for the presidency of the Surrey University Students' Union. Does this mean that university standards have elevated me, or that they are now on the level of a cat? The tiniest hurt can produce a thousand curses, but even ten thousand curses cannot make a hole even in a piece of paper. It is your duty to do your best. It is not, however, your birthright to prevail. Have you noticed that many people who like to claim that they are suffering from original sin can be seen clearly to be suffering from nothing more original than greed, impatience, and laziness. The gentleman who has just said that he can't understand us because everyone else whom he has contacted in the esoteric sphere regards him as genuine may not realize what sacrifices others may have made to humor him. The situation reminds me of this anecdote. A circus keeper used to show a cage with a lion and a lamb lying down together in it. Someone, though such people are rare, asked him how he did it. Easy, he answered. I just feed lambs to the lion every morning, noon and night, until he can't stand the sight of them. If you make friends with a frog, you should prepare for the eagle to be your enemy. If you wish to be the companion of the bat, you must make friends with the knight. Though you may hate a scorpion, you cannot count on its victims to support you. A sponge will soak up dirty water as readily as clean, but a person with even a trace of spiritual dishonesty will tend actually to prefer contaminated or useless teachings. Is the lack of recognition of gold due to the incapacity or negligence of the assessor or to the nature of the metal itself? Masses of British and American people who share, we are told, the same language, clamour for precise definitions of the meanings of Sufi words and phrases. Perhaps they have not heard of the test in which a group of British and United States citizens were asked which of two definitions of a store clerk was more likely to be the correct one. A. Someone who sits in a place where things are brought in, having been sold, or B. Someone who walks about in a place where things are taken out, having been bought. All the Americans marked the second version, all the British the first. I have just been handed a piece of paper with this question on it. Why have Sufis all over the world for centuries been called liars and opportunists? The fact is, of course, that they have far more often, almost always, in fact, been called the reverse. But, assuming that there were some people who felt in this way about Sufis, 
The answer should be, because the people who said these things could not call the sun a liar when it went behind the clouds, or the rain an opportunist when it soaked them because they happened to be in the open during a shower. Victory over the weak is more shameful than any defeat. While you are waiting for me to say what, incidentally, I am never going to say, you might as well listen to what I am actually saying. A bad teacher, someone once said to me, is no teacher at all. But a bad student, that is a disaster. Make sure that you really want to learn before you complain of the teaching. Remember the words of St. Augustine, Make me chaste and continent, but not yet. A major purpose of familiarizing oneself with Sufi sayings and writings is to acquire a store of statements which can yield their reality at various levels, whose meaning shall be perceived level by level when one has almost reached it, so that this meaning helps one to rise further. Say what you should not, and you will have to hear what you would not. They say that people will think a fool wise if he does not speak. But if he is a fool, is he likely to act upon the suggestion? A young Western seeker after truth has just returned from one of the usual, well-meant but almost useless journeys with which such people amuse themselves. He did, however, notice something which is worth noting, though he spent far too much time and money learning it. This is what he said, somewhat abbreviated. When I looked for goulash in Hungary, I found that this meant not stew, but soup. What we call goulash, they called perkelt, and that can be made of fish, not beef, as we do. In Pakistan, tandoori merely means from the oven, and the Chinese laughed when I asked for chop suey, since far from being a delicacy it means scraps and odds and ends, they say. In India, when I asked for spirituality, even from greatly revered gurus, all I got was rehashed sentimentality which was quite insipid. I wonder what one has to ask for there and how in order to get the real thing. People haven't changed in the centuries since the Master Saadi said, Not a trifling word is said to the Master of Awareness, but he will grasp its wisdom. And if a hundred chapters of wisdom are read in the presence of an ignorant one, it will all reach his ears as a trifle. If you wish to meet yourself... Observe your thoughts and reactions under unusual circumstances. Truth is hateful to the hypocrite, but you must find a way to introduce it under his guard. Because this is so difficult, masses of hypocrites are undetected, especially by themselves. You don't have to know everything to be wise. You don't have to know every one to be valued. If I say the sun is shining, everyone knows what I mean. That is, they think that they do. Few, however, will realize when they hear that phrase that the sun is always shining, and that what makes it appear that it is not is the clouds which are interposed between it and us. For some purposes it does not matter whether we know or take note of the facts about the weather. For others it could make a very great difference. 
If it is to make the difference for us, we have to know it and to register it. The same principle holds good with respect to Sufism and ultimate reality. All I can say about the man to whom you have just referred is that he is the sort of man who would go to England because of the weather. I once asked a very wise man how he had developed the power of seeing through hypocrites and frauds, how it was that his assessments of people were so uncannily accurate. He said, Most people listen to talk and mix hearsay and repute with it. All I do is to stop listening. I watch. It is easy to make hopes come true. Just live up to someone's expectations of you. People are always asking why they do not make more progress in their inward studies. The answer is simple for the detached observer. You cannot keep a crow and corn in the same field. When the crow is hungry, and the corn is sparse. Can you approach truth, do you think, if you cannot be honest about your own dishonesty? The moment you are born, you become a moving target for the world. You may be much more than this. But do you remember that you are a target as well? Are you ignorant enough to expect horsemanship from blacksmiths? People are always asking why we do not seek truth through the relics and records which are so abundant. They are, of course, people who forget that if you plant cheese, you will not harvest milk. Wisdom gives honour to nobility and nobility to everything else. If you want to nourish your stupidity, try a little avarice. Education has its problems. This includes making the wise wiser and the foolish more foolish. As the air does not exist to be looked at, the Sufis do not exist except for practice. They do not exist for discussion. The imagination of the wise is truer than the knowledge of fools. Some years ago, I was asked on a radio program why, in a certain book which I had written, the Sufis always came out on top. Why did they never come unstuck, he wanted to know. I was at first surprised at such a prominent individual as my interviewer asking a question like that when he could have thought out the answer for himself. But I assumed that it was rhetorical, and that he was giving me an opportunity of explaining for the duller listeners that the material was instructional, like a book of mathematical tables. The other day I met a well-known scholar for the first time. As soon as we were introduced, he said, "'Chap interviewing you on the radio once made a telling point against you about Sufis always coming out on top.' I noticed that you dodged the issue, but I couldn't help noticing that you had no answer. Just as some Western techniques and instruments of great promise, indiscriminately introduced and carelessly used, have harmed people in the East, so does the random and incomplete importation of Eastern ideas and practices 
often act adversely on people of the West. Listen to advice based on experience. It costs a great deal, but you are not charged for it. Yet the payment which you should make is to try to understand it.